Okay, so in the last class we were looking at uh, uh, some of the basic programs that were developed by this Yale group uh, uh, based on conceptual dependency then this particular program is called Margie and it was a program which was designed for sentence level understanding. It would just un understand one or two sentences essentially. Later on they designed more programs which try to understand complete stories because they require more concept context knowledge essentially or, or you know you might say as some linguists call it pragmatics essentially you should know what really happens out there in the world to make sense of what you are seeing essentially. But we will come to that later let us look at a few more examples of uh, uh, Margie in the inference mode. So, here jo is a sentence John gave Mary an aspirin and all these inferences Margie makes that John believes that Mary wants an aspirin that Mary is sick. Mary wants to feel better, Mary will ingest the aspirin essentially. Now, you can see that these are not deductions or they are not deductive inferences, they are not guaranteed to be true essentially, but we do not often make uh, uh, inferences which are guaranteed to be true essentially. So, so this is kind of focused on non logical inference making essentially, which is based more on what really often happens in the world. John is going to the store essentially. So, of course, one thing is he wants to be at the store, other thing is that he may want to buy something and then if you are really knowledgeable about the world you might say he will trade some money and get something from the store. Okay. You can also work in a paraphrase mode where you can just simply once you have generated a conceptual dependency representation of a sentence, you can generate a natural language sentence from that essentially. So, for example, John advised Mary to drink the wine the program has paraphrased it as saying John went told Mary that drinking wine would be, be would benefit her. And later on uh, at some point we will see how is the word advice uh, uh, represented in conceptual dependency that is a key to understanding this sentence or this sentence which says that John killed Mary by choking Mary. Uh, the paraphrase could be John strangled Mary because somehow the system is able to understand that strangle means killing by choking okay. and John choked Mary and she died because she could not breathe for example. All this must be represented in the meaning of the word strangle itself essentially. Reading the book reminded Rita to loan the book to Bill essentially. So, Rita remember to give the book to Bill and she expect him to return it because of the word loan because someone read the book. In this case it is not figured out that it was Rita herself who read the book. These small inferences can sometimes be hard to make in natural language. So, John prevented Bill from giving a banana to Mary by selling a banana to Rita essentially. So, John, so it is just paraphrasing what you are reading here. Bill was unable to give a banana to Mary because Rita traded John some money for the banana. So, we already know that you know buying, selling, they all involve trading of money on one side and getting some entity on the other side. Mary could not get a banana from Bill because Rita bought a banana from John. So, just stating it in different ways essentially. So, the basic axioms that we will look at in conceptual dependency representation is that for two sentences with identical meaning or as close to a meaning as possible regardless of the language. So, it is not that this is an English language. Uh, based uh, representation or a Hindi language based representation or Tamil or Marathi or whatever. It is a language independent form and you should be able to represent whatever you are saying by parsing any language essentially. Hmm. They should have the same representation and at some point some of their work showed that they could uh, read a story in English and paraphrase it in Spanish for example. Maybe at in one of the examples that we will see after a week or two we will see such examples. That is possible because once you have a canonical representation which is language independent, uh, you can generate the output in any language that you desire. So, it could be a mechanism for language translation as well essentially. So, this would be what some people would call as deep translation essentially. You go down to the meaning level and then generate the new sentence in the new language essentially as opposed to uh, most translation systems are somewhat more superficial, they do not really create a conceptual representation of what is being translated. Any information that is implicit in the sentence must be made explicit in the representation. 
because the representation is all that you are going to be working with essentially. So, in some sense it is it is like uh, eager evaluation the moment you can figure out what the sentence is saying you create its representation essentially as opposed to lazy evaluation which you would say that I will make the inferences when I need to make the inferences. The meaning propositions underlying the language are called conceptualizations. There are two kinds of conceptualizations active and stative. The active basically says that an actor does an action which may have an object and a direction and may have an instrument essentially, but the basic diagram that we will use is, is an arrow with two lines double arrow with two lines two sided arrow with two lines and a stative representation says that an object is in a state and we will represent a with a three line double sided arrow that we already seen some examples. What are the kind of inferences that that John Margie can make? So, this is all people have programmed it essentially these are kind of common sense inferences you might you might say John picked up a rock he hit Bill essentially. So, it is a specification inference so, John hit Bill with the rock it does not say any any anywhere in the sentence that he hit Bill with the rock, but that is a plausible inference that you can make that John hit Bill with the rock essentially. Then John and Bill were alone on the desert island, Bill was tapped on the solar. Now, if you can figure out that only John and Bill were there, then you can figure out that John was the one who tapped Bill essentially. Then causative inferences John hit Mary with a rock, then it is a plausible in inference again that John was probably mad at Mary essentially. Now, resultative inferences John gave Mary gave John a car and you can infer that John has the car physically. Then you can have motivational inferences John hit Mary then you can start kind of infer that he probably wanted Mary to be hurt essentially. Enablement inferences Pete went to Europe you know where did he get the money to travel essentially. Function inferences John wants the book then you probably wants to read it essentially. These are all inferences you are making different types of inferences that we are talking about and en enablement prediction inferences Dick looked at this in his cookbook to find out how to make a roux essentially. So, he will probably now make that particular dish. Missing enablement inferences. So, Mary could not see the horses finish she cursed the man in front of her. Why did she curse her? She curse him because he blocked her vision. So, that is an inference you can make essentially trying to explain what is the connection between sentences. So, as we will see as we go along the whole idea of understanding stories is to somehow establish connections between the different sentences. So, if you can establish the connections and if the story is coherent to start with then you can say that you have understood the sentences. Intervention inferences the baby ran into the street Mary Rena ran after him essentially why of course, because she does not want the baby to get hurt essentially. Action prediction inferences John wanted some nails he went to the hardware store essentially. Knowledge propagation inferences Pete told Bill that Mary hit John with a bat. So, Bill knows that John has been hitting the bat towards the later part of the course we will try to see if we have time uh, we will look at this kind of epistemic reasoning that if you tell somebody some something then the person knows it essentially. Normative inferences does Pete have a gallbladder it is very likely John saw Mary at the beach Tuesday morning why was not she at work essentially. So, it is a question, but it is a question which is based on the inference that she should have been at work on Tuesday morning what is she doing on the beach essentially. State duration inferences John handed a book to Mary yesterday is Mary still holding it probably not essentially. So, you need some sort of world knowledge to be able to say that you do not keep holding a book all the time essentially. Then there are some heuristics like Mary went to work what is the time of this common action likely to be. So, most likely people go to work in the morning. So, it must be morning. So, you can make that inference unless of course, she happens to work in a call center. In India uh, servicing somebody in the US I think so. John went to Paris essentially predict the likely instrument will be fly. Okay. So, this is a sentence that we had seen in the last uh, the first sentence we saw John hit his little dog and if we add the word yesterday to that yesterday John hit his little dog then the same conceptualization that we were looking at except with the 
fact that the time stamp in some sense has been put on the conceptualization and that is yesterday. Okay, so, so far we are still choosing these words in an ad hoc fashion. So, now we want to really come to conceptual dependency theory which is this small set of predicates that they use for describing events essentially. So, if we had said something like the man took a book we might represent it by saying that uh, the man did the action take and the object of the action was book essentially. And because he must have taken it from someone we can add this uh, recipient case to that uh, which says that from someone to the man the book was this thing. So, these are called case markers and uh, in some languages like many Indian languages the case markers are explicit essentially. So, they tell there are specific markers for describing the different cases that can occur in understanding a sentence. So, you must have heard about you know things like Kartani, Karamko if you have studied Sanskrit or maybe even Hindi essentially. Whereas, if you if you observe English language does not have explicit case markers. So, you say John gave Mary the book nowhere it says that the John is the agent and Mary is the recipient essentially. Whereas, in Indian languages these things are explicit essentially and in most Indian languages in some of them they are mixed up with the word. So, there are inflections on the word in some they are separate words for example, in Hindi they are separate words. So, what are the conceptual cases that we are talking about the objective case was what is the objective of the sentence the directive case which direction did a person go to recipient case what was being transferred or an instrumental case as to what was the instrumental action essentially. <coughs> conceptual cases are predictive mechanisms they create slots that need to be filled up and the conceptualization is incomplete till we have filled up all the slots. Okay. So, as we will see the whole way of processing is to hypothesize a conceptual structure which may have empty slots and then your whole story understanding process would be motivated by trying to fill up those slots essentially. Hmm. So, we will see uh, after we have gone through the basics of CD theory essentially. Okay. So, we said the man took a book, but you could also say uh, uh, I gave the man a book. Now, you can see that the only difference between giving and taking is the actor or the agent is different. So, when you say he took a book then he becomes the agent if you say I gave the book to him then I become the agent essentially. The action does not change the doer of the action changes essentially. So, one thing that they want to do is to separate these two facts essentially you do not need a separate word for take and a separate word for give instead you can use something like trans which is a kind of a short for transfer so transfer essentially. So, when you say the man took a book you can say the man transferred the book from someone towards a man and if you say I gave a, the man a book then I did the transfer essentially. So, the agent or the actor changes the action remains the same essentially. So, if you say John grew plants with fertilizer then there are two things which are happening here one is that the, the plants are growing and we will approximate that process by saying that they are going from a size x to size x plus y essentially. It is a very naive way of representing growth, but we will assume that it is like that. And then John is doing something we do not know what John is doing, but he is doing something with the fertilizer essentially. Now, fertilizer linguistically is an instrument plants with fertilizer, but conceptually as you can see here fertilizer is, is an object of some action and we have not specified what the action is. So, we will just use do for that essentially to stand for he, he did something. So, there are two things which are happening a state change event that is the plants are growing and a conceptual action that John is doing something and the object of his action is the fertilizer essentially. Yeah. So, there is a causal connection between. So, we talked about those causal connections this is an example of that. So, John did something with the fertilizer which caused the plants to increase in size. So, again it is a very what some people call as folk psychology way of representing things we do not really represent things like that in our heads 
x and x plus y, but let us assume that we are doing something essentially. And there are certain markers like i stands for intentional that he did this intentionally. And the simplest way of parsing this sentence that John grew the plants with fertilizer is to say that he did something as a result of which the plants grew essentially. But if you are a more knowledgeable person, if you know what fertilizers, uh, what you do with fertilizer and so on, you may create a different conceptual structure based on this. So, this is a representation of the sentence John grew the plants with fertilizer, but you may create a different uh, structure, you may create a structure like this, which says that he transferred the fertilizer from the direction of the bag to the ground where the plants are growing and as a result of which the plants grew from side x to x plus y essentially. So, again you can see it depends upon the world view of the of the reader or the listener. If you do not know what you did with the fertilizer then you would not know essentially. So, what are the CD actions that we will talk about? So, this is a place where we cut down on the set of possible actions instead of take and give we will use some some common form and in effect what this group showed was that with 11 to 14 actions you can represent almost most of the everyday activity in terms of just a small set of predicates essentially. Hmm. So, one action we will call is a trans the transfer of an abstract relationship such as possession ownership or control. So, if I give you a book then I am physically giving you a book but I am also transferring possession of the book to you. So, that transferring possession part would be captured by the action a trans essentially. So, give take buy will all involve a trans essentially. So, when you when you buy something you transfer possession of some money to some someone and that person transfers possession of some object to you essentially. But the, the underlying act would be a trans as opposed to that p trans is physical transfer. So, if I give you a book I am doing p trans as well as a trans essentially. So, I must model it like that exactly. When I say I gifted you a book, then I physically gave you the book as well as transferred possession of the book to you. Exactly. But P trans will also be used uh, for people going somewhere that John went to the canteen. So, he P trans himself to the canteen essentially, hmm. or you put something in a basket, you P trans something into the basket essentially. Then propel application of physical force to an object anything which is talking about application of force irrespective of whether that object moves or, or does not move. I mean you may go and push the wall, but you are still applying force, but the wall is not going to move essentially. Hmm. So, any action of force like push, pull, throw, kick will have propel as a way of describing them essentially. Then move, move is used to talk about an animate agent moving a body part essentially and it is often an it is often an instrumental act for p trans. So, if you say John went to the canteen you can say that John went to the canteen by the doing the instrumental act of moving his his legs essentially which you can break down further into saying that moving left leg right leg left leg right leg and so on which is a kind of trying to describe what you mean by walking essentially. So, move foot is an instrument in kick for example, if you say Beckham kicked the ball then he moved his leg in such a manner that it resulted in the ball and his foot coming into a state of contact as a result of which the ball went flying into the air and it totally bent into the goal right. Grasping is uh, to grasp an object by an actor anything which is talking about picking up or you know grabbing or letting go will be to not grasp anymore and so on essentially will involve grasp. Ingest all kinds of input to our system, expel all kind of output from the system will be modeled as either ingest or expel. M trans is a third kind of transfer which is mental transfer. The transfer of mental information between animals or within an animal itself essentially. So, memory will be you know model again this is like folk psychology this is not cognitive science or cognitive this is not neuro neuroscience this is just a way of trying to model how we represent and process things essentially. So, we can think of the memory as a long term memory short term memory conscious processor 
immediate memory and that kind of stuff and this is what this group did. So, memory was partitioned into conscious processor, long term memory and so on and so forth. So, if you are talking about something like telling somebody then you are entrancing between people. If you are talking about seeing something then you are entrancing some information from your eyes to your conscious processor. If you remember something that means, you are entrancing something from the long term memory to the conscious processor. So, they are just ways of modeling things, but instrumental to all these kind of things is m trans which is mental transfer. Then m build is the constructor construction of a new formula you might say from some old information. So, if you want to say that he decided concluded imagined considered any kind of inference would be involved m build essentially. Speak is an action of producing sounds it does not necessarily mean speak in a language anything that produces sound we will model by using speak. So, if you want to talk about saying or playing music or a cat purring or somebody screaming everything will involve speak. Attend the action of attending or focusing a sense organ towards the stimulus also an instrument of m trans essentially. So, if you want to say that he is seeing something he is m transing something from his eyes to the conscious processor the instrumental act was that he attended his eye towards the object or something like that. Hmm? If you are listening then you are using your ear. So, you are attending your ear to that. Essentially. So, let us look at this notion of instruments when you look at John ate the ice cream with a spoon linguistically the spoon is the instrument with which John ate essentially. Hmm? Conceptually the action that we are going to talk about is that John ingested ice cream and we will think of an instrumental act in which John is doing something with the spoon and spoon is an object of that act. So, this arrow that you see here this arrow with uh, this letter i stands for the instrumental act. So, this whole act which includes this whole thing is actually an instrument to this the arrow should really be pointing to the uh, to to the other act, but it is more convenient to write it at the end of the conceptualization essentially, hmm. but you must imagine that 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 this thing is one act and this thing is another act and this act is instrumental in doing this act. So, he ate the ice cream and the instrumental act was that he did something with the spoon essentially. Again if your world view is more informed you might know what he did with the spoon. Okay, just I, what I was saying the arrow is meant for the act and not for ice cream essentially even though it appears to point to ice cream. So, if you know something more about uh, what you do with spoons then you might say that the act was that uh, he transferred the spoon which contained the ice cream from the ice cream to the mouth which is which was his mouth essentially possessed by John. So, every act can have instrumental acts for example, John ingested the ice cream by transfer by transferring the spoon towards his mouth which he did by grasping the spoon and then moving his hand by flexing his muscles by thinking about flexing his muscles and so on and so forth. You can you know always keep breaking down into smaller instruments, but we when we talk about representation we will always truncate this whole chain at some level that we are comfortable with essentially that is the whole idea of modeling essentially when you are modeling something you are abstracting away from the level of detail at which the thing is happening into some level of detail which is useful for you and which you are, which you are comfortable to handle essentially. So, let us look at some more sentences. So, John was sad because Mary hit him. So, we will model this as a state change essentially some action is causing a state change. What is the change which is happening that John has gone from some state to being sad and Mary did the action of hitting. Now, hitting is not a CD act we want to restrict ourselves to a small set of acts and what we would really do is we would sort of as described here that in CD theory hit would be modeled as coming into a state of being in forceful contact with propel being the basic act and move the instrumental act essentially. So, we will see an example, but basically we want to represent this as a causal relation 
that Mary hit John, whatever, however we represent hit, and that caused John to go from a state of being not sad into to sad essentially. So, events can cause other events as we saw. So, when gave Fred Mary a peach, she ate it essentially. So, Fred transferred a peach from Fred to Mary as a result of which Mary ingested the peach essentially. Hmm. So, certain words in English language which and other languages which are treated as verbs do not necessarily have a direct correspondence to conceptually what we would call as actions essentially. Hmm. Now, when in, in English killed is a verb essentially. So, for some dubious creature like John, he went and killed his teacher. So, if you say John killed his teacher, in English language it is a verb essentially. So, he did I mean if you try to imagine what John did, what is the action that he did, then it is very difficult for you to imagine simply by saying that reading the sentence that John killed his teacher. Because well, you do not know how he killed him, you know he could have shot him, he could have drowned him, he could have you know, all kinds of things you know. So, conceptually a verb like kill in the language will be treated as a state change causal event in conceptual dependency. So, we will model this as saying that John did something and P stands for past as a result of which the teacher who was John's teacher went from a state of being alive to a state of being dead. So, conceptually killed is not an action, kill is a causal relation between some action and some effect of that action. So, that is one distinction one has to missing. Now, if you had said that John killed his teacher by shooting him in the head, then you would have said that John propelled bullets from the gun to the head of the teacher as a result of which the teacher went from a state of being alive to dead essentially. When you say flying, if you say Sam flew his plane to San Francisco, then flying is again an English language verb, but we will again model it as a state change or a, or a state causative effect that Sam did something to his plane as a result of which his plane flew from somewhere into San Francisco. If you want to say comforting, then George did something. If John comforted Mary, then George did something as a result of which Mary went into a state of being comfortable. Here is a more complex uh, sentence that since smoking can kill you, I stopped essentially. Now, this, this is a slightly more complex thing. Now, if you want to model this. You can see that the first thing is the relation between the act of smoking and the state change event of dying essentially. So, the first part of this if you watch this carefully the first part is the relation between smoking and dying and then this whole thing causes you to stop smoking essentially. So, there is one conceptualization which relates uh, ingesting to dying mm -hmm. that if you if you ingest smoke then you can die. So, this C stands for can it can kill you it does not mean that if you, you will die if you smoke a cigarette or something like that. Essentially. Now, this whole thing was a reason for which I did this act of stopping to smoke. Now, this the stopping is captured here actually. So, sometime in the past I this uh, I stopped doing this. So, that label basically captures the fact that, but the conceptualization is that I ingest smoke from the cigarette to me, but sometime in the past as it says here 
I stopped doing that basically. And I did this because smoking can kill you, which is captured in this larger conceptualization here. Then something like while going home, I saw a frog. So one one conceptualization is a time stamp for another conceptualization. So the top one says that uh, I was going home, so the house possessed by me. And then the second one says that I saw a frog, and the first one is the time when I saw the second one essentially. Okay, so I'll stop here. Uh, in the next class, we will continue looking at uh, representations of inconceptual dependency theories.